Hello bookish people, today I have a haul of epic proportions for you. You can see here I have stacked up, I have four big stacks of books uh, that are physical books. I also have a bunch of Kindle books that I have purchased. It's over 80 books in this haul. This is what happens when you don't do a haul in like more than six months. The last haul that I did was in September of last year. We are now in June. This video uh, might be going up in June, it might be going up in July. So lots and lots of books here to talk about. Uh, I decided for this haul to divide them based on whether I've read them or not. And then the ones that I haven't read, I've sort of divided by um, genre. And I'm saying that loosely because I haven't read these books. So sometimes figuring out what genre a book is is kind of challenging. So if I'm wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments down below. Tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. I will also say I'm going to talk about more than 80 books in this video. I am not going to give you a synopsis of each one. I just can't. Please feel free. If anything looks interesting, go look it up. Um, you can look it up on Storygraph. You can look it up on Goodreads. Google it. I'm really sorry. I just can't talk about them all in this video. I am going to start with my steampunk gas lamp Victorian historical fantasy type stuff. Again, this is where the whole genre thing kind of breaks down. This is Turning Darkness Into Light. It's a companion novel for the Memoirs of Lady Trent. I bought this before I had read any of the Memoirs of Lady Trent series. I read the first three books, didn't like it, have a whole video. I'll link it down below. This one, I don't know if I'm ever going to read it, but it's, it's on my shelves for right now. It does follow a different character than that series. So there's a possibility I might decide to pick this one up. Next, I have uh, The Angel of the Crows by Catherine Addison. Uh, Catherine Addison's most well known for The Goblin Emperor. But this one is set in England, but like Victorian England, and there's a Jack the Ripper plot. This one I really, really want to get to. Updraft, this is more like traditional uh, steampunk, I think. By It's by Fran Wilde. Uh, this was recommended to me years and years ago. I bought it a while ago. I haven't read it, obviously. That's why it's on this list. Elysium Girls. I don't know anything about this book other than the fact that when I saw this cover, I was like, that is definitely steampunk and with that like Wild West vibe. And I bought it based on that. We have this amazing um, horse that's made out of, you know, machinery. Uh, I really... I want to read this just based on the cover alone, to be honest. I do think it is YA, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on that. And it is by Kate Pentecost. Bone Shaker. Um, I can't believe I haven't read this yet. This is like a very well-known steampunk series. Um, the series, I can't remember what it's called. Um, but it, this is by Cherie Priest. It, it's quite old now. It was written probably more than 10 years ago, if I had to guess. And uh, it's kind of embarrassing that I haven't read it. Those were the physical steampunk books, but I also do have a couple that I picked up on Kindle. So the first one that I picked up on Kindle that is steampunk or gas lamp or, you know, whatever else that we're calling these uh, was Clockwork Magpies by Emma Whitehall. And um, I don't actually know anything about that. I think I bought it on like a 99 cent sale. Go look it up, I guess. Um, it's not high on my priority to read anytime soon, but when I see steampunk books on sale, I like to buy them. Um, I'm also pretty sure this is probably self-published or something like that. Same with the, and I can't get the name of this right, it is so hard to say, the Demoniac, Demoniac, and this one is by Kat Ross. Again, I bought it on sale, don't know when I'm going to get to it, but it looked steampunky. And then this next one, I don't know if it actually belongs in the steampunk gas lamp fantasy category or if it should be maybe more in like gothic horror, but this is Strange Practice by Vivian Shaw. This uh, was mentioned by Judith from Dead Good Book Reviews. I think that's what her channel is called. I will link it down below. And when she was talking about it, I was like, I have to read this. This sounds amazing. It follows, I think it's the daughter of Van Helsing and she is like a medical doctor, except her patients are like not human. They're like vampires and monsters and stuff. I hope I'm describing that right, but it sounded really, really cool. It is set in like a Victorian England period and there is, you know, fantasy elements, which is why I included it in this category, but it could go in a different category for genre, I'm sure. Okay, now the next category, let's talk about retellings. And let's start with my Kindle purchases for this. I have a couple. Um, so the first is Midnight in Everwood by M.A. Kuzniar. This is a retelling of The Nutcracker, I believe. A lot of people were reading this like last December and I picked it up on 
Boxing Day sales. I don't know when I'll get to this. Uh, it sounds interesting, but it might be a really good winter read, so we might save it for a while. Then I also picked up The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed. This is a retelling, um, and I'm getting it mixed up with the next one because the next one is For the Wolf by Hannah Witten, and one of them is a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood, and the other is more a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, I think, but I can't remember which is which. I think The Wolf and the Woodsman is the Little Red Riding Hood retelling, and For the Wolf uh, by Hannah Witten was the Beauty and the Beast retelling. I don't know, these were big books last year. They're both 2021 releases. I bought them both on sale on Boxing Day. They both interest me. I love a fairy tale retelling, so I'm definitely excited to get to these eventually. We also have two physical books for this category of retellings. The first is Girls Made of Snow and Glass by Melissa Bashardust. I should have looked up names beforehand. Um, this, I think, is a retelling of Snow White and follows like the Evil Queen and Snow White. I think it is YA. Sounds really interesting. Again, maybe a book that's more wintry. Not sure. Um, but definitely something I want to give a try. And then, of course, I can't believe I haven't got to this. This is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. This is a retelling, I believe, of Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, I think that's what it is. And I think this is going to be a five-star read for me. I don't know why I haven't gotten to it yet, probably because it's a physical book and I don't have it in, like, e-copy, but definitely want to read this. This one was a gift from my husband for Christmas. Why don't we just clear out this pile right next to me and go to, uh, this is Sci-Fi next. And this first book is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. Um, it's a small little book. It is the first in a series. I have tried reading this and I did DNF it. Um, it's very weird. It follows like these people who have gone into this zone where humans haven't been for a really long time and the plants have gone kind of wild and crazy and there's just like weird stuff happening in this book and um, yeah, I do want to pick it up and try and read it again. It was another one of my five-star predictions that I haven't read completely yet. I also have The Stars Are Legion by Cameron Hurley. I have been a longtime reader of Cameron Hurley's blog, um, and I've never actually read a book by her, which is kind of embarrassing. So I bought this one on sale. I definitely want to get to it. It's really like more traditional sci-fi, I think. That's my understanding with like, you know, being out in space and spaceships and all that good stuff. This is another one I really want to get to. This is Unconquerable Sun by Kate Elliott. I love Kate Elliott. Um, this is her like newest series that she's been working on and it is a gender bent Alexander the Great. So the main character is a woman instead of a man, but she is basically like Alexander the Great. Um, it's like, I think this counts as space opera. Not really sure. The second book came out, I think, earlier this year in the series, and so I definitely want to read this one. I mean, I want to read them all. Who am I kidding? But we can only read so many books. <laughs> I mean, I said I had, what, 80 books here? That's like more than half of the books that I will read in a, in a year. So I need to slow down on buying books, I think, is, is what the reality is. Um, the final sci-fi physical book that I have is uh, The City in the Middle of the Night by Charlie Jane Anders. I loved All the Birds in the Sky. I'm pretty sure that was by her as well, and I really, really enjoyed it. So I picked this up. That one's really weird, like sci-fi, contemporary, just kind of strange. So I kind of thought this one would be too, but I think that this one's a little more traditional sci-fi because I do think it's not taking place on Earth. I think it's on like a planet where there's this city that exists and it's in the middle of the night. I don't know. I'm making stuff up now. Go look it up if you want to read it. This one is another one that like I bought because I like the author, but I don't really have any immediate plans to read this anytime soon. Like probably not this year. Now for sci-fi books, I only had one um, that was a Kindle book that I bought and that is The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. I'm excited to read this one. I haven't had any real success with reading from Sarah Gailey, but I've heard that the Echo Wife is very like creepy and foreboding feeling, which is not at all the feeling that I've got from other work by Sarah Gailey. So I'm gonna give it a try. Now, let's see, what do we have next here? Uh, this is the Invisible Library series by Genevieve Cogman. The final book in the series just came out this year and I actually just finished reading it like last night. Um, and I think there's eight books in the whole series. I obviously don't have eight books. I have one, two, three, four, five. Um, so I'm missing three. I just ordered yesterday The Untold Story, which is book number eight. So I am missing two from this series. So we have The Invisible Library, which is the first book. And then I think I'm missing the second book um, because I'm pretty sure that The Burning Page is the third book. 
Um, the Lost Plot is the fourth book, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then I lose track and I don't know which numbers these are. The Mortal Word and The Dark Archive. Uh, this series is so much fun. It For me, it feels very much like Doctor Who, if you've ever watched Doctor Who. Now, I'm not like a big Whovian, but I did grow up watching like the original Doctor Who. And then I did watch from like the reboot of Doctor Who until the end of the Matt Smith episodes. Um, which is quite a few episodes like that's three doctors worth i love these books because like the main character irene she is this librarian who works for the library capital l uh, which is this interdimensional library which exists to maintain balance between order and chaos in the universe and she has to steal books to to do that the books have to be stolen and brought to the library and like each book has its own villain and there's there are plot threads that go through the whole thing but you're on different worlds exploring different things the multiverse is a real thing like it's just very much fun. I'm going to do a whole video about this series because I actually really, really love it and I think more people should read it. Um, but there's my little haul. I did get all of these through Book Outlet at various times over the last six months, just as an FYI. So they like appear and disappear from Book Outlet. In terms of series, I also picked up on Kindle the box set. I mean, it's, it's Kindle, so it's just files, but the whole set of The Confectioner's Guild by Claire Luana, which is a series uh, that is YA, I believe. It is fantasy. It follows this girl who um, can imbue magic into food. And I just, I love those kinds of books. I read the first one in the series last year in July, and I'm hoping to read the next one in the series this year in July. Um, but there are four books in the series. There's three in like the main series and then a companion novella. So I picked that up on Kindle. My hair is doing whatever it wants. And then I also picked up a bunch of uh, just random books in the series called Cadfile by Ellis Peters. This is like cozy murder mystery books. And they were started being released in the 1970s. I think there's like over maybe 20 or 30 books in the series. They're books that for me, like I think of sitting at the lake and reading a book in a day kind of thing. And I wanted to have them on Kindle because we have a full paper set, like all of them at the cabin. But I wanted to have them on Kindle too in case I can't get to the cabin. Like last summer, I couldn't get to the cabin at all during the summer because of like wildfires and COVID and like all kinds of different things. So I wanted to have access to them as well on my Kindle. I got actually like eight different ones. I'm going to just pop them up on the screen right now because um, if you're not like a CAD file fan, you probably like the titles won't mean anything to you. But if you haven't read anything from the CAD file series, I think they do hold up. I think they're good cozy mysteries if that is your thing. They're not fantasy. They're set in the Middle Ages with a monk as the main character who is like the sleuth who is figuring things out. He wasn't always a monk though. He had like a very interesting life before he joined the monastery and he's always figuring things out and I just I really enjoy these books. They're very nostalgic for me. I've been reading them since I was a teenager so your mileage may vary but there you have it. I bought eight of those on Kindle and I will continue to buy whenever I see them on sale. Okay we better get to the stack before it falls over. Um, so these are, uh, what, what category is this? Historical fantasy, I think is what these are. Um, I actually have two, so we're going to hold them up together, by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. We have The Beautiful Ones and Gods of Jade and Shadow. I'm actually reading Gods of Jade and Shadow right now and really enjoying it. I'm about, I don't know, a couple chapters in, not very far, um, and it is about, um, like it's set in Mexico in the 1920s, but there are... Uh, Mayan gods that are like walking among people. So that one's really, really fun. And then we have um, this one, which I'm actually a little unsure if this is actually historical fantasy or if it's like fantasy that's completely in its own world, but kind of takes influence from our world, kind of more like the gas lamp type stuff, um, except Silvia Moreno Garcia, because of her Mexi Mexican heritage and upbringing, like I think it's maybe set in Mexico um, or like a fantasy version of Mexico. And it has like characters who have um, these magical abilities. I have heard this also described as fantasy of manners, but it's the only one on my stack that is fantasy of manners. So I didn't have enough to create its own category for that. So I just stuck it in with the historical fantasy. Again, if I'm wrong about this, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, it's totally possible that I'm wrong, but I'm really excited to read this. And then I also have The Glass Magician by Caroline Stevermer. Stev Stevermer. 
I don't know, I just butchered that name and I apologize. Um, this one is set in New York in the early 1900s and we're following like a, a magical act, like a on the stage, I believe, um, it's like stage magic, but magic is real. Uh, sounds really, really interesting. I think it, because it's set in New York is why I picked it up. I love books set in New York, especially like historic New York, like not like current New York, even though current New York is also very cool, but it's just such a big city, right? There's so much that can happen there. Just, and this cover is really pretty also. This might be YA, not sure, um, but I don't know why I haven't like focused more on my physical books because there's so many now that I'm going through all of these and I'm like, why haven't I read that? That looks so good. So then on my Kindle, I picked up The Lost Queen by Sigme Pike. I had tried to listen to this one on audio and it, the narrator had an accent because this is set in like a, a historical um, Scotland and I could not listen to it at a fast enough speed for it to work for me because I, I don't listen to audiobooks at one time speed anymore. I usually do like two or 2.5, sometimes even three, depending on the narrator. Um, but with an accent, I just, I couldn't parse the language and um, I decided to buy it because I really want to read this one. Um, Scotland is another one of those sort of like buzzwords for me. I love a Scottish setting. This is historical fantasy. So there's magic and all that kind of good stuff. So I really want to give that one a try. So I do have a couple of categories where I don't actually have any books on the table here because I didn't have any physical ones in that subgenre. Um, but I want to go over those now. So we have a couple of mystery books. So Grave Reservations by Shri Priest. This is like really different from what I normally read. It's got like a paranormal focus. I think we have a character who's like clairvoyant. She can like see the future and she gets involved in a police investigation really, really want to read that one. Um, Cherie Priest is the author of Bone Shaker, which I showed earlier, which is steampunk. So very strange to me that she's changed to writing this kind of thing, but very curious about that. I also have a book called Shadow in the Empire of Light by Jane Rutley. I don't remember buying this Kindle book. Um, I did look it up before doing this video and it looks like it's like a fantasy murder mystery type of book. It does give me kind of like Encanto vibes because we have a main character who is the only non-magical member of a family who is all very magical and she's the one who has to kind of like solve the problem. That's probably why I bought it. I probably bought it right after Encanto came out. <laughs> and then I also have some like horror or gothic, maybe like fantasy horror. I don't really read like hardcore horror. I don't like really scary stuff, but I do have uh, on my Kindle Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. I think this has something to do with like evil deadly mermaids. Um, and same with the next one, you can see a theme here. I also purchased All the Murmuring Bones by A.G. Slatter, which I also think has something to do with murderous mermaids. Um, so definitely need to do like a readathon or uh, some kind of, I don't know, something that will <laughs> let me read all my mermaid books because I have a whole bunch of them. Then I also bought Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth and this one I have no idea if this is like gothic or horror or whatever I've put it in this category based on a best guess it might just be historical fiction something like that it was really popular last year or the year before I can't remember it was on my radar and that's why I bought it when I saw it on sale again I have no idea when I'm going to read this I buy things and I don't have plans for them which is a terrible terrible way to build your collection of both kindle books and physical books. Okay, let's talk about epic fantasy, even though I only have one physical book that fits this category. This is The Grace of Kings. In my last haul video in September, if you watch that, um, I hauled the ebook of this. So I now have it in both physical and ebook copy, which I don't mind. I actually like that. Um, this is obviously by Ken Liu. This is the first in the Dandelion Dynasty series. It's very intimidating. I really want to get to it. The whole series is complete now, I believe. I think it's four books. Um, this has been described as silk punk, which is why I put it in epic fantasy and not steampunk because I know that Ken Liu himself like doesn't consider it steampunk because it comes from the sort of tradition of China and Chinese um, history and culture and all of that kind of stuff. Whereas like steampunk is very rooted in that like Victorian European kind of ethos. So that one is another one that I need to get to. Um, but I also tend to buy more of my epic fantasy on Kindle. So I picked up Malice by John Gwynn, which I was supposed to read last month and didn't. I also grabbed The Tiger and the Wolf by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I've read one um, sh short novel, novella, that's what it's called. That's the word I'm looking for. One novella by Adrian Tchaikovsky, which I loved. And so I wanna read more of his stuff. This one I think is more like just traditional epic fantasy. He also writes a lot of like science fiction and then like 
He's got some like crossover type stuff. I think he has flintlock. He does a lot of different things, but this one was on sale, so I picked it up. It is a series. I really don't know much more about it than that. Um, I also have Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I'm kind of waiting until the whole series is done on this one to read all of them. Like I'll buy the next one and the third one when it comes out, like the second one's already out. But I've heard how like the first one ends on a cliffhanger and then the second one feels very much like just a middle book where like you're waiting for the conclusion, which is gonna come in the third book. So I don't wanna like ruin my reading experience. If I can read them all back to back to back, then that is what I will do on those ones. And then we have The Unbroken by Sale Clark, which is a book that I have DNF'd multiple times and probably will never actually read at this point, but I own a Kindle copy. So it's in this haul. I haven't talked about it as a book that I hauled. I think I bought this also in like January on like Boxing Day, end of December um, kind of deal when the end of the year when lots of things were on sale. Then I have The Hall of Smoke by H.M. Long. This is a really cool cover. I don't really know much about this, but I want to read it, I guess. I don't know. Again, here we go with things that I have no plans for, um, which is different than the next one because I also purchased Memories of Ice by Steven Erickson, which is the third book in the Malazan Book of the Fallen. Um, I have them all in physical, but they're really big books and I wanted to get them on Kindle. So as I've been reading them, I've been buying them. I did read the first two, reread them because it's a reread for me. I reread them last year. Um, I honestly kind of paused my reread of that series just because there were other things that I wanted to get to rather than rereading a big, huge series that I've already read. And then finally, the last one on this list of Kindle books that I bought in the epic fantasy category, whatever you want to call it, um, is The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. I am scared to read this book because I think I'm going to hate it. And my friend Kristen from Kristen is Fully Booked loves this book. And if I hate it, um, like I'll have to talk about it because I'm not gonna just like not talk about it on something on my channel because I don't like it, but I don't wanna ruin it for her. And I don't think she wants me to read it. We're gonna call this next category historical stuff because I have three books that didn't really fit anywhere else in this haul. And um, they all are like historical-ish. So we're just gonna, we're gonna call it historical stuff. And the first one is a nonfiction. This is um, The Lady of Sing Sing. This is a nonfiction about the first woman who was sentenced to death by the electric chair in the US. And I'm really curious about this. It sounds kind of morbid, kind of dark. If you know me, I have read other stuff in the similar vein, like uh, The Five, which was a nonfiction about the five um, victims of Jack the Ripper. Um, I also really loved The Devil in the White City, which was about H.H. H. Holmes, the like first serial killer in the U.S. So it's right up my alley in terms of the kind of nonfiction that I like to read. Um, I did buy this on sale. I think I paid three dollars for it on Book Outlet, something like that. So hopefully that doesn't mean that it's not a good book. Hopefully that just means that nobody's heard of it and no one's buying it. But I don't know when I'm going to get to this. Then um, this one again, I, I don't know, maybe it's contemporary, maybe it's historical fiction. I don't really know, but this is about um, this character who receives a book and in that book there's a lot of information that leads the main character to believe that his family is cursed and he has to like break the curse. Um, I love books about books. This also has mermaids in it because his family was historically like a traveling show family where they like were in a circus or something or a sideshow where they dressed up as mermaids and did a like underwater thing. So <laughs> Lots of buzzwords on this one. Again, I don't know when I'm going to get to this. I also don't know what to classify it as, as you can tell. I don't even know if that one counts as historical, but that's okay. Next in this weird category, we have Silence, which is a translation of a 13th century French Arthurian romance, except in this, our main character is born uh, a girl and then her family raise her as a boy because, sorry, there's glare on that, um, but she's raised as a boy because of like inheritance laws and her family doesn't have any boys. And so she is like a knight. And um, I heard about this one after I read Spear by Nicola Griffith. And I was really, really curious because I loved Spear so much. And in case you're you know wondering, Spear has a similar kind of thrust to the plot where we have um, in that though, it's a, a girl who, just wants to be a knight and, and as when she becomes a woman she does become a knight and she's just very masculine but she's still a woman um whereas in this one like the main character is like pretending to be a man um but it is i don't know if you can see it is um written like we have the english translation with the original 
um, French, so French on this side and English on this side. I do speak French. Um, I don't speak 13th century French, so I don't know how good that will be, but I'm excited to read this. Um, very, very different than other stuff that I read on this channel. If you want to know my thoughts on this, let me know in the comments down below. I could see doing like sort of a pseudo reading vlog where I like read chapters of this and then discuss my thoughts. Um, yeah, let me know down below. I don't know if people would like that. So we have a couple more stacks left here. This is going to be such a long video, but I do want to take a minute to talk about a couple of books on my Kindle that are urban fantasy because I don't have any physical urban fantasy books. So the first one is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I have heard lots of people talk about this. I think it is kind of older, might be YA, not really sure, um, but it sounds really interesting with this girl who I think can like travel between worlds or something like that, or there's monsters. I don't know. I'm sure you can find a review and find out more what this is about. And then I also have the utterly uninteresting and un unadventurous tales of Fred the Vampire Accountant by Drew Hayes. This has been recommended so many times by Pete from Ponderings of Pete. It's a whole series. Um, I'm really curious about this. It sounds like a really novel take on vampires and I bought it and I want to read it. Okay, let's get to our YA and middle grade pile here. So the first is a middle grade book. This is The Bootlace Magician, which is actually the second book in a series. The first one is called The Circus Mirandus. I haven't read either of them. I bought this because of this cover. Okay, look at that. A dragon and some rainbows. Um, I don't really know much about this book. It follows a little boy. Um, you can see the cover for Circus Mirandus on the back. I don't know if that's focusing. I'll probably save this for March of next year for middle grade March. Um, I don't think it fit any of the prompts this year, which is why I didn't read it in March this year. Now getting into just general YA. Um, this is a random one. So this was actually a surprise gift from my husband. Um, he knew that I wanted to read it before I watched the Netflix show. And so he got it for me. Um, I think the hype has really died down on this series and I don't know if I want to read it right now, uh, but I am happy to have it on my shelf. It is really pretty. I think this is YA. That's why I put it in this category. If it is not YA, I mean, tell me down below. Um, but I definitely am interested. I've never read anything by Leigh Bardugo. Now I have something of hers on my shelf. This one I bought when I was on my like mermaid craze and this is a song below water. Um, I don't know anything about this other than, than the fact that it's YA and it has mermaids. And then this one um, where dreams descend. I hope this is YA again. I don't really know. I think that this has like both thieves and like a magical competition in it, which are things that I love. I also have some Kindle YA um, and middle grade titles. Well, mostly YA. I have a peculiar peril by Jeff Vandermeer. I have no idea what this is. The cover looked interesting. I thought I was going to like Jeff Vandermeer, but after DNFing Annihilation, I'm not so sure, but I bought this one already. And then I also have A Faithless Hawk by Margaret Owen. This is actually book two in the series. I made a mistake when I bought it, I think. So we got to get book one, which I think is called The Merciful Crow, if I'm not wrong. I, I honestly don't know why I bought book two before I had book one. And then uh, I also have The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. And that one, I definitely want to read this fall because I think it really gives me fall vibes and I'm excited to give that one a try. Last stack before we get into the books that I've already read. This is my Magical Realism stack. Not very big, but I have Blackwater Sister by Zen Cho. So far I've read two books by Zen Cho. One was a hit, one was a miss. So we'll see with this one. Neither of those were uh, magical realism, but this is about a woman who goes home to Malaysia um, and her dead grandmother's spirit, I think, is like haunting her. Um, that's very bare bones. I don't know. Like I said at the beginning of this video, go look it up if it sounds interesting. I am excited to read this sooner rather than later. And then we have The Little Shop of Found Things, which is um, about this woman who runs an antique store and she like can travel through time through the antiques, something like that. It's described as being for people who like Outlander, um, if that appeals to you. I love that kind of like magical realism stuff though. So my husband bought this for me for Christmas. And then the only Kindle magical realism title that I have is The Inheritance of Orcadia Divina. I hope I pronounced that right by Zareda Zoraida, I can never get this name right, by Zoraida Cordova. I'm really sorry if I butchered that name. Um, and so that is all my magical realism books that I haven't read. Now let's get into the very long list of books that I had not yet hauled on the channel, but I have actually read in the last eight months or nine months, whenever, <laughs> however long it's been since I did my last haul. I'm going to go through this particular list very fast because you're going to be able to find videos on my channel where I mention all of these books, wrap-ups, TBRs, 
um, you know, individual reviews, any like pertinent videos I'll link down below so you can go take a look if anything interests you. But I'm not going to give descriptions of any of these. So just listing them now. So the first is Sword Heart by T. Kingfisher. We have The Fire by Fire Above by Robin Bennis. A Dead Gin in Cairo by P. Jelly Clark. The Sisters Medeiros by uh, Patrice Serif. The Atlas Six by Olivier Blake. Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. And A Brightness Long Ago by uh, Guy Gabriel Kay. Now for the physical books, we have Piranesi by Susanna Clark. The Thief on the Winged Horse by Kate Mascarenas. Spinning Silver by uh, Naomi Novik. I've actually uh, not got any content on my channel about this one because I read this before I started my booktube channel, uh, just as an FYI. Ophelia and the Marvelous Boy by Karen Foxley. Tess of the Road by Rachel Hartman. Network Effect by Martha Wells. And last in this uh, haul, but not least by any means, one of my favorite books of last year, Legendborn by Tracy Dion. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It lets me know that this is the kind of content you want to see. If you want to watch my last haul video from September, I will link it up here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, and as always, go read a book.